Hello, it's Professor Gilmet here, and uh, I'm going to be teaching you about frequency distribution. So, even though I'm not here, um, I'm still going to be teaching the lesson. So, here we go. Frequency distributions. The objectives for this lesson are we want to construct frequency distributions, and we want to be able to construct histograms, and basically just kind of talk about some of their summary stats. We're going to wait for pie charts for the next lesson. All right. So why is this important? Well, basically the human mind is not involved to understand large lists of data and we need a visual organization and summaries of the data to make any meaning of all of those numbers. So in the next few lessons, we're gonna be devoted to making meaningful summaries of the data through appropriate displays, right? Measures of center, measures of spread. Now, Excel is actually designed for this purpose and has a large number of very intuitive functions to help us. I'm going to demonstrate them during the course of the lesson. However, there are many videos showing how to do it in the TI Calculator online, YouTube, and such places. And of course, your ebook, probably um, Math Textbook, has some directions as well. Um, but if there was one chapter I felt like you should really try and learn to use Excel, it would be this one as it is the most useful to you in the real world after you graduate and get a job. And so as H.G. Wells said, statistical thinking will one day be as necessary for efficient citizenship as the ability to read and write. And I think that day is here. I think that your ability to think statistically is just as important as your ability to read and write in our modern world. So I hope you get a lot out of this um, chapter. Now, how do I create a frequency display? So what do we do when we have this list of data? Can we make a frequency display? Um, uh, we can. We can make a frequency display. Um, one day I will learn to read. Uh, a frequency display is a table that shows how often a variable takes on a specific value. And so it's a way of summarizing just how often something happens. And so, for example, um, the Legends of Tomorrow, uh, one of the shows that I watch on the CW, are tracking some time anomalies over a 30-day period. And so they observe the following, right? So they've got this table of 30 values. And so how do we make sense of this table here? Do we know how often to expect an anomaly? Do we know how often there are no anomalies, right? So to construct a frequency display to count up how often each of these values happen, we simply count up how often each value happens, it occurs. Start by understanding which values do occur. Here we see we just have zero, zero one, two, and three happen in the 30 days. And as you go through the table, you can, you can easily kind of see that those are the only four values. Um, I have put those values in here, okay? So all 30 values have been um, pasted into Excel for us to deal with here in a moment, all right? And so what you do to, to make it, it's, it's gonna be a table, and in that table, you're gonna list the values and so you're gonna have zero, one, two, and three. Each of those unique four values. And then we just count up how often each value occurs and put it in the other column. So if we go back to the table, I can count ze the zero happens one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, okay? And so that's where this 10 comes from. I counted up 10 zeros. And then I would count up the 10 ones, I would count up the three twos, and then I would count up the seven threes, right? And I would just fill out this table. Now, even with only 30 values, we see that this is tedious and where you could simply count wrong, right? You could miss something. And therefore, people rarely do it this way, right? Especially if you have huge data sets. In Excel, we use the add-in data analysis tool and the histogram function to really help us. Now, here's a note. You may not have the data analysis um, tool pack installed in Excel, but to install it is actually pretty simple. You go to File, Options, uh, find the Excel add-ins, click Go, and select the data analysis tool pack. All right, and then you click OK. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So I'm going to go to File, Options, right? 
I gotta go to add-ins from general and here you see the data analysis tool pack and so I'm gonna manage my Excel add-ins by clicking go I'm gonna click the tool pack and the solver you don't have to click the solver I just like having it in my Excel and I click OK and now <clears throat> you have the access to it right um, you should be able to see data and then the data analysis will tool will show up all right so um, when you have a data set like this you do need to determine what values um, to which the bins will be set and remember, a bin is a range of values into which you put data. And so a bin should be the same size and it should start at or below the smallest value. And then bins are added up till you're above the highest value. A good rule of thumb for the bin size is to divide the range by a number between 8 and 12 and then use whatever makes sense, right? So if you divide it by between 8 and 12, you're going to end up with 8 to 12 bins, which is a good size for being able to determine most data sets um, and then just use something that makes sense if you've got five and a half use five right if you've got 17 use 15 or 20 right use something that makes sense right and then remember the range is the maximum value subtracted by the minimum value right and so for above for the above data we only have integer values of 0 1 2 and 3 so each bin should just be of size 1 and start at zero. So just like the table above. Um, and you'll want to put those bin sizes next to your data so that you can reference them in the next step. And so if I'm making this, right, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say, hey, look, I need zero, one, two, and three for my bin sizes. Okay, and so you're going to want to actually put those bin sizes in. Now, you just go to data, data analysis, and histogram. So I'm going to click on data, data analysis, and then I'm going to find histogram and click OK. And now I have the, the data here, right? So follow the directions, select the data and the bins you just calculated. OK, so I'm going to go over here. Here's my, here's my um, input range. So here's my data. I'm going to go ahead and input that data. And then here's my bin range. And so I'm going to select those four guys right there. I don't have labels for anything, so I'm not going to click on that. But the output, right, the output I'm just going to put right next to it. Um, and the output is where you want the frequency table to be. So I'm just going to put it right next to my uh, bins. And I usually just select the start cell and let Excel fill in the rest. I don't, I'm not trying to figure out how big it's going to be. Um, and then the bottom option creates the histogram too. So you probably want to select chart output. That's going to be your histogram. All this other stuff is just fancy icing that you can um, figure out later on. And then we just click OK. And so you'll see here's our histogram. Here's our bin 0, 1, 2, and 3 that they got from over here. Here's the frequencies just like we um, counted up. The more is zero, so you can actually delete that with a little right click and shift the cells up. Um, and so that'll give you a nice thing. And so now here's your histogram with each of the values um, on it. So that makes us uh, super happy, right? So, so what is that histogram? Well, a histogram is just a visual representation of the frequency distribution. It shows you what the values are as the height of the bars instead of as a list in a table. And this makes it a lot easier to see what the values are doing. So if you look at our histogram, the 10 here is right here. The 10 here is right here. The three here is this bar that's only three tall. And the seven here is right here. It's this bar that's seven tall. So we can see we've got a mode here and here. And then this is the next highest value and two is the least frequent value, right? So this is just a visual picture a graph of this frequency distribution over here this table all right <clears throat> and that's all a histogram is now you have lots of options for the histogram but we're only going to do basic things for right now you can add stuff at the top with a right click and change titles and do all kinds of stuff in here but really for right now we just want to be able to make a histogram all right so summary values right 
Now you can do the same thing for what are called descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics summarize the data into single values that make the entire data set much more understandable. It tells you things like where the center of the data is, how much variability there is among the data, and other things you might need to know. And so this function will report the mean, the median, the mode, the standard deviation, range, min, max for a data set. And so I want to demonstrate this also because this is a nice straightforward way to get an understanding of what's going on. And so the Excel description directions for descriptive statistics. This function will report all of those things that I just stated and I'm going to demonstrate that by um, data, data analysis, descriptive stats. And then again, we're going to follow the directions and make sure to click summary stats. I don't know why that's not clicked by the default or, or why you wouldn't want that clicked. But going back to Excel, right, go data, data analysis. Instead of clicking histogram, I'm going to go up a little bit and click descriptive statistics. And I'm going to click OK. And again, our data is over here, right? So I'm just going to grab that data. It's grouped by columns. So while this table had several rows and columns, if you leave it like this, um, is this is not going to be happy. Okay, it's going to actually treat each one of these columns as one data set. So you're going to end up with one, two, three, four, five, six data sets. And so this is why for this function, I put everything in a column. And then there's no label in the first row. The output, the output I would like to put somewhere near it. So I'm going to put it right here. Oop. Okay, so I'm going to put it right there. And again, right, you want to make sure you have summary statistics on, and all this other stuff is just fancy stuff. And so when you click OK, what you'll get is for column one, right, the mean, the standard error, you don't really need to know that, median, mode, okay, standard deviation, the variance, not so much, kurtos and skewness, those are important to know if the distribution is normal, but we're not talking about that in this class. Um, and then you've got the range, the min and the max. If you added all the values up, what would it sum up to? That, that can be an important descriptive. And then the count. This is kind of important because it lets you know that you got all the data. Like if you know you have 30 data points and your count is 27, you miss something. Okay? So these are going to be the things that we focus on in this particular class. Now, a note about the um, mean, the uh, mode over here. <clears throat> I got to scroll down, right? Multiple modes. Now, there's always one thing that ends up being a pain and less straightforward in all of this stuff. And for us today, this is dealing with multiple modes. Excel has a function for it, but you actually need to select a range of cells before you type the function in. So if we look over here, this is saying that there's only one mode and it's zero. But we can actually see that zero is just the first mode. There is a second mode of one. So what we want to do is we actually want to say we've got one, two, three, four data values, right? So what I'd like to do is select four cells, one for each bin, okay? So I got four cells here. And then once I have selected the cells, I'm going to type the function equals mode mult, right? So here I'm going to type equals mode, and you see the mold mult mode mult pops up, right? And so you can hit tab and that will fill it in, right? Tab. You hit enter, weird stuff happens. So hit tab. Now, we're going to grab our data. Right? We're going to grab all of our data because that's the next step, select the data, and then we're going to close the parenthesis. Okay? So I'm going to close this parenthesis right here. And then last but certainly not least, to get it to do what it's supposed to do, you actually have to hit Shift, Control, Enter. I could explain it, but I don't even care, right? So I'm going to go back up here, right? And I'm going to hit Shift, Control, Enter all at once, holding them all down. And when I do that, 
what happens is the zero pops up, that's my first mode. The one pops up, that's my second mode. And then there are no other modes after that. And so that's what that NA stands for. So I only have two modes, the zero and the one, which is exactly what I expected to get. Um, <clears throat> and that makes us happy. So it's a little less straightforward because of the shift control enter and the selecting more than one cell, but it's really not that hard. Um, and if you've got a histogram, you can probably just visually look at it most of the time. So now I do want to do one more example that's a little more involved, right? And so now I love DC shows on CW like Legends of Tomorrow. And so for our last example, we're going to help uh, Jackson, uh, half of Firestorm, analyze the power outputs from the Wave Rider, right? Now, if you don't watch these shows and you don't know anything about what I'm talking about, that is okay, all right? The idea is you're going to have 50 values and you have that have a much larger range. And so where do we start making a frequency distribution and a histogram, right? So if you've got a set of data, a big set of data that has larger values in it and it's harder to analyze, what do you do? So um, here over in power outputs, right? So here's my power output and here are the 50 readings, right? And you can see like I've got 168, 221, 192, 126, there's a 107, there's a 214, right? There's a 223, there's a 14. That That's probably 214 or 114. Sorry, I just didn't type it in. Um, and so there you go. So you got all these guys right here. So what are you gonna do? Like, like what's, what's even the minimum? What's the maximum? Do you really wanna go through all 50 values and try to figure that out? That would be terrible, right? Well, so the first thing that I typically do when I have this is I just do the summary stats first and let that tell me what the min and the max values are. This is, this is a great way to get started. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go data, data analysis. There's my descriptive stats. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to clear all that out and just do this column right here. Now you'll notice I actually grabbed power output. That is a label in the first row. So I'm gonna click that this time so that it knows that that's what's going on, okay? And then the output range, right? So I'm gonna clear all that out and I'm gonna put the output range right there. And again, I wanna have the summary stats clicked on. And so I click okay. And so here's my mean, right? Here's my median and mode. I don't know if there's only one mode or <clears throat> if it's multimodal, <clears throat> but Here's my standard deviation is 39. It's probably gonna help me with my bin size, but the big thing is the min and the maximum, okay? Those are right there. So if you remember from earlier, the range is going to be equal to this maximum, 223, minus the minimum, 104. And I hit enter, and I've got 119. And so I take that 119, and my bin size then, how big I want to make those bins is probably going to be that 119 divided by 8, 10, 12, right? So what if I divided it by 8? Well, I get about 15. I see the standard deviation is about 40, right? So I go, oh, nice. So let's just use 15. 15 would be a perfect bin size to use, right? So I divided that range by between eight and 12 to determine a bin size, and I got 15. Now I wanna create the bins for my table, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Here are my bins. Now the minimum value is 104. I don't, I don't wanna do 104 and then add 15 each time. That would be a pain in the butt. So I'm just gonna start at 100, and then I'm just gonna add 15 each time. So if I add 15, I'm gonna have 115, right? 130, 145, 160, I'm just adding 15 each time until I get above 223, right? So then I'm gonna have a 175, a 190, um, 205, 220, and then I need one more to, because I gotta be above 223, right? And so one more is gonna be uh, 235. And so these, are gonna be my bins, right? 
So now I'm ready to actually do my frequency table and my histogram. So again, data, data analysis, histogram. And so again, here's my uh, output over here. Right? I do have a label. It's that first one right there. Uh, oh, bin range. The bin range is actually right here. Excellent. Output, I want that output to be right next to it. And I definitely want to output the histogram. And so I click enter. And I'll see that um, I've got seven values between 100 and 115. I've got uh, nine values between 115 and 130, right? And so here's, here's my bins. Right, and so actually, I went from 220 to 235. So, so here's zero. So I can actually get rid of that again. Right click, delete. Right, shift cells up. And so here's my histogram over here. Not very uniform, right? Probably skewed to the right if you've taken stats with me. But, but there it is. Here's the histogram, and here's the frequency table. And so this is how I would do it if I had a bunch of ugly data over here okay and so um, I'm gonna do so now I did it and you can watch it again over and over and over again and that makes you happy and if you enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, like the video and that makes me super happy